Let's go. Get ready to explore the vibrant heart of Japan, Yokohama. This ain't your average travel vlog, guys. We're diving headfirst into the coolest spots, the tastiest eats, and all the weird stuff that makes Yokohama uniquely awesome. So buckle up, smash that like button for good luck, and let's get this adventure started. First up, we're hitting up Yokohama Chinatown. And let me tell you, this place is huge. But hey, getting lost just means more time to stuff my face with delicious dumplings, right? And the smells. Oh man, the smells alone are enough to make your stomach growl. Noodles, spices, something that smells. Suspiciously like victory. It's all here. Plus, you gotta love the vibe. Lanterns everywhere, people bustling about. And did I mention the food? Yeah, it's that good. After demolishing a plate of dumplings, or three, we stumbled across a fortune cookie factory. We had to go in and see how the magic happens. Turns out it's not magic. Just some very skilled aunties folding tiny pieces of paper with lightning speed. And just when I thought Chinatown couldn't get any cooler, bam. We turn a corner and there's a parade happening with a giant fire-breathing dragon. Next stop, the Yokohama Red Brick Warehouse, a place where history meets hipster vibes. These old warehouses used to be used for, well, storing stuff, but now they're like a giant playground for adults with cool shops, art galleries, and enough Instagrammable spots to make your phone overheat. We're talking exposed brick walls, vintage furniture, and enough Edison bulbs to light up a small city. It's like stepping into a Pinterest board, but in a good way. We even found a vintage record store blasting some sweet J-pop from the 80s. But don't let the cool vibes fool you. This place has a spooky side too. Legend has it that one of the restrooms is haunted by the ghost of a sailor who died tragically at sea. Did we try to find the haunted restroom? Maybe. All right, after all that excitement, I needed a break. So we headed to Sankayan Garden, a beautiful oasis of peace and tranquility, or at least it's supposed to be. My inner monologue, however, had other plans as I strolled through the meticulously manicured gardens, past koi, ponds, and traditional tea houses. All I could think about was, man, how much you wanna bet I could jump this pond? Spoiler alert, I did not attempt to jump the pond mostly because there was a very stern-looking security guard watching me. But seriously, this place is stunning. There's something so calming about being surrounded by nature, especially when it's designed with such care and precision. It's like walking through a living, breathing work of art. I even managed to meditate for like five minutes without getting distracted. If you're looking for a place to escape the hustle and bustle of city life, Sankai Garden is it. Next up, we hit up Yamashita Park, a waterfront paradise that's perfect for a relaxing afternoon stroll. Or, you know, an epic battle of wits against a gang of seagulls determined to steal your ice cream. Guess which one happened to me? As I strolled along the waterfront, enjoying the fresh sea breeze and the stunning views of Yokohama Harbor, I couldn't help but feel a sense of peace wash over me. That is, until a rogue seagull swooped down and tried to make off with my taiyaki. Let me tell you, those birds are fearless. But even the threat of avian robbery couldn't ruin the magic of Yamashita Park. From the iconic Hikawa Maru ship to the giant red shoe sculpture, don't ask, I don't know either, there's something here for everyone. Plus, the street food game is on point. Well, Hold on to your hats, folks, because we're headed to the future. Well, technically it's just Minato Mirai 21, Yokohama's futuristic waterfront district, but close enough. This place is like something out of a sci-fi movie with towering skyscrapers, cutting edge technology, and enough neon lights to make your retinas scream for mercy. We're talking buildings that look like giant spaceships, a giant Ferris wheel that lights up like a disco ball, and robots serving coffee. Okay, 
Maybe I made that last one up, but you get the idea. Minato Mirai 21 is all about pushing the boundaries of what's possible, and it's pretty darn cool. But the best part? The Wi-Fi here is lightning fast. I'm talking download a whole season of anime in five seconds fast. So if you're a digital nomad like me, this is basically your paradise. Whether you're into futuristic architecture, cutting edge technology, or just really fast internet, Minato Mirai 21 is a must visit. All right, time for a little culture, folks. We're headed to the Yokohama Museum of Art, home to a diverse collection of modern and contemporary art. And let me tell you, this ain't your grandma's art museum. Unless your grandma is super into abstract expressionism, then maybe it is. We're talking paintings that look like a five-year-old let loose with a paintbrush, sculptures that make you question the very nature of reality, and installations that are just plain weird. But hey, that's art, right? It's supposed to make you think, feel, and maybe even scratch your head in confusion. I'll be honest, I don't know a whole lot about art. I'm more of a stick figure kind of guy myself. Cork. Calling all ramen lovers. Today, we're embarking on a pilgrimage to the holy grail of instant noodles. The Cup Noodles Museum. Yes, you heard that right. A whole museum dedicated to the wonder that is cup noodles. And let me tell you, it's even more glorious than you could imagine. We're talking walls lined with every flavor of cup noodles ever created. Interactive exhibits where you can learn about the history and science behind instant ramen. And best of all, a chance to make your very own custom cup noodles. Hold on to your chopsticks, folks, because we're about to enter the ramen vortex. That's right, we're headed to the Shin Yokohama Ramen Museum, a shrine to all things ramen. And let me tell you, this place is a noodle lover's dream come true. Imagine a place where you can sample ramen from all over Japan, from the classic Tokyo-style shoyu ramen to the rich and creamy Hakata-style tonkatsu ramen. Well, stop imagining and start slurping, because that's exactly what this place is. The museum is designed like a, a retro Japanese street scene from the Showa era, complete with vintage storefronts, flickering lanterns, and even a replica steam train. It's like stepping back in time, except with way more ramen. We spent hours wandering from stall to stall, sampling different types of ramen and trying to decide which one was our favorite. Bichu. Get ready to soar to new heights, folks, because we're headed to the top of the Yokohama Landmark Tower, the second tallest building in Japan. I'm talking ear-popping, knee-wobbling, I can see my house from here heights. The elevator ride up is an experience in itself. It travels at a speed of 45 kilometers per hour, whisking you up to the 69th floor in a mere 40 seconds. Just try not to think about what would happen if the cable snapped. But once you reach the observation deck, all thoughts of plummeting to your doom vanish. And trust me, the views are worth the minor heart attack you might have had in the elevator. On a clear day, you can see all of Yokohama, Mount Fuji, and even Tokyo in the distance. We spent ages just gazing out at the sprawling cityscape, feeling like we were on top of the world. Ahoy there, mateys. We're setting sail for adventure at Yokohama Hakijima Sea Paradise, a massive entertainment complex that's part amusement park, part aquarium, and all around awesome. We're talking roller coasters that twist and turn over the ocean, a giant Ferris wheel that offers breathtaking views of the bay, and an aquarium that's home to thousands of marine creatures, including dolphins, sharks, and even penguins. First up, we brave the Aqua Ride, a log flume that sends you plunging down a waterfall into a pool of water. Let's just say I got soaked. Then we rode the Blue Fall, a free fall ride that drops you 107 meters at a speed of 126 kilometers per hour. I screamed like a little girl, but the highlight of the day had to be the aquarium. And that's a wrap on our whirlwind tour of Yokohama. 
From the bustling streets of Chinatown to the dizzying heights of the landmark tower, this city has something for everyone. I ate my weight in ramen, rode every roller coaster I could find, and even managed to learn a thing or two about art. Don't tell anyone. Yokohama, you stole a piece of my heart and probably a few years off my lifespan with those roller coasters.